Welcome to Discovering. We're in Marquette County on one of the UP's many scenic inland lakes in search of largemouth bass. A lot of the fish are going to get real stuck to the cover and they're going to be up underneath the boat docks and underneath the pontoon boats and such. And what I like to do is I want to skip my lure up underneath. Stick around, it's Monday night and time for Discovery. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill, the eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure, feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. Talk about bass in the UP, you're usually talking smallmouth. I had the chance to spend a sunny day on a scenic UP lake with Scott Cormier and his nephew Riley, fishing for smallmouth's biggermouth cousins, the largemouth. Well, obviously we just launched on a real small upper Michigan inland lake. Um, just a couple casts in, we caught a little small, a small largemouth here on a top water, throwing a Strike King sexy dog, trying to get something to come up in this fog in the morning. So hopefully we're gonna have a good day. There's a good one. There we go. That's what we're looking for. There we go. That's what we came for. Yeah, that thing's huge. Yeah, it is. Right in the corner of our mouth, right where he belongs. Beautiful fish. Oops. I caught that fish on a Strike King Rage Bug, it's called. It's actually a soft plastic. It actually looks like a good crayfish imitation or a good bluegill imitation. This here's blue craw color. We have a Texas rigged with a tungsten weight, 3 8 ounce with a bobber stop on it, so it'll hold it down by the, by the bait here, so it makes it nice and weedless. Little crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the shoreline's real shallow here, but offshore here we have a nice big cabbage bed that kind of tapers off into about 10, 12 feet of water. And I'm throwing a top water to kind of draw them up this morning while Riley's throwing a pure poison rattling jig to try to call them up out of the yeah. out of the weeds. Good job, Riley. Keep coming, keep them coming. One. Yeah, you're gonna get them. Keep them coming. Slow them down a little bit. Hold on. We'll get them. There you go, buddy. 
Good job. Go ahead, throw him back. Good job, buddy. Little Strike King swimming shad, swimming caffeine shad actually, that Riley caught his last fish on. We just donated one to the lake. As I'm getting up to a log like this, this perfect piece of cover, I want to get a good casting angle, so I'm setting myself up out in front of it so I can put a cast right down the length. Come here. There we go. <laughs> nice UP largemouth. Good shape fish. He's got a little bit of a blemish on his eye, but other than that, just a beautiful fish. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to rig up what I call a structure bug, okay? But I'm gonna actually rig it Texas style. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I actually, when I'm punching heavy cover or throwing into a bunch of weeds and such, what I like to do is I actually like to snell knot my stuff. So, and I'll show you why I do that, okay? Most people just tie a cinch knot or a clinch knot. What I'm gonna actually do is run the line through the high of the hook, make a good size loop over your finger, okay? And you're gonna take it and wrap it around the hook shank. And you're gonna wrap it around the shank here, up towards the head of the, the eye of the hook, eight to 10 times. And you go back through the loop that you just made. Okay, you wanna moisten it, and you're gonna pull it down tight, and you're gonna watch it go over the top of that barb, that catcher. Now the only reason why you do that is a lot of people will rig a Texas style with a regular style knot, and when you pull on it, it just pulls the sinker through the fish's mouth and it doesn't hook sometimes. What this does is it actually, because of the way the knot's tied, when your sinker actually hits, it actually makes the hook go sideways. So you have a much better percentage of hooking the fish in the side of the mouth. So your line comes through, pulls up, and that line just makes the hook pull right out. Okay, I'm gonna make you aware of a little trick that I use to save plastic. Usually you only get one or two fish out of everything. So what I usually do is I get these O-rings. You can buy them pretty much everywhere. And I have this little hook keeper that goes on the edge. And you put the lure inside here. And you bring your O-ring down and just slide it onto the bait. What that does is when you put the lure through, you make sure you come underneath that O-ring. I got it down one ridge too much. I want it down on the second ridge. You put it just below that O-ring. And what that'll do is it'll hold the bait on the hook better and you want that keeper on the bottom side of that O-ring so it's actually gonna hold it. So once you Texas rig it, it'll last through more than just one fish. And I wanna text pose the hook so the hook's poking through and I just pull the plastic back a little bit just to kinda of hide the hook point. And there we go. Good one. Puppy, come off. It's okay, bud. That's why it's called fishing and not catching. Yep. There you go. Finally got ourselves a dock fish. Some finally come out. Cute little chunky fish. Good gear class. The big 
big, big thing on the water. Okay, now that comes straight out, straight out towards us. Okay, so throw it as far as you can right at that spot right there. Try to get in those trees. up underneath the pontoon boat where you're supposed to be. Thank you, girl. Now that the fish are actually coming off their late summer patterns where they've been fishing, you know, real deep, they're starting to follow the bait fish up shallow again. So they're starting to get off those first breaks in the water. And we're just trying to intercept them as they're going in or there out on these long elongated flats. So the nice thing about this lake is it's got every single year class in it, so it's a very, very healthy lake. See you, bud. They just start chasing the bait fish, feeding up for, for fall. Nope. Cute little guy, hit a structure jig right on the end of the tree where he belongs. He read the book. And they'll start grouping up more, getting into more schools. Instead of having one fish here, one fish there, we'll be able to catch multiple fish off one log or one area. Crazy one. Yeah, a little crazy guy. Crazy little guy. Another one on the Strike King jig. Gosh, they're healthy little fish. Another one. See what I said? A lot of people wouldn't probably have caught, thrown back up at that tree, but same tree. Exactly next cast. Catch another one. That's just persistence. Right now we're still targeting, like today we're fishing a lot of hard pieces of cover, so we have big logs in the water trees, docks, that type of stuff the fish are holding on. I got that one on the Pure Poison vibrating jig. Saw a lot of little tiny fish swimming around out here in the grass and thought I'd throw something that's up above the grass instead of down inside, so. Let's see if we catch some more. Now when these high bluebird skies pulse frontal conditions that we have today, a lot of the fish are going to get real stuck to the cover and they're going to be up underneath the boat docks and underneath the pontoon boats and such. And what I like to do is I want to skip my lure up underneath.
Frank King structure jig up underneath the pontoon boat right where you're supposed to be. Little wacky style. Zero. Up underneath, right where you're supposed to be. That's a good one. Oh, it's got a bigger one with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, look at the big one underneath it. There he goes right there. Look at how big that one is. It seems to be the size this afternoon up on these docks. Like I said, there's a fish there. Always throw it back in, you never know. I think there could be three. Yep. Oh, we come off. Well, today what we've been doing is we've been skipping some docks and skipping some trees and skipping some pontoon boats. I'll give you a couple little easy tips for skipping, okay? I'm using a bait casting rod, 20 pound test sunline and a 3 8 ounce Strike King structure jig. You see it's got a really flat back on it, so once you have a low trajectory, it skips really well underneath that dock. Now a lot of people have put a full-size trailer on, okay? This is a Strike King Rage Craw trailer, full-size. I'm gonna take two segments and bite them off to give you a little bit more compact lure. And most people will put it, they'll put the hook right straight down the center, okay? Well, what that does is you have this little edge there that kind of sticks out and it catches the water and it doesn't let it skip well. So I actually set it offset. So I'm actually putting it back more towards the back of the rig and putting it down that way, okay? So once you push it up here, you see it's very much in line with the back of the jig. So when you have that low trajectory and you throw it, you get a good skip out of it. So a nice little low trajectory and just skip it up underneath that dock. You want a nice little roll cast <laughs> Slow them down. Oh, bring them up here. Pick them up. There we go, bud. Awesome. Here. Show them to Brian. Good fish. Well, we had a great day here on the water today, um, fishing some pulse frontal conditions, real high pressure system, real bluebird skies, and the fish were really tucked into everything today. So we were actually going after them underneath the docks, underneath the pontoon boats, inside the weed pockets, and we were using a variety of different lures, obviously. So one of the ones I was skipping earlier today, this was actually a Strike King Rage bug with a 3 8 ounce tungsten sinker, pegged tight, Texas rigged, and that gave us quite a few fish this morning right away. What Riley was throwing, and what I would throw every once in a while, was a wacky style. This is called a Strike King Zero. Um, it's just a stick worm. There's a lot of different brands on the market work really well. We're just wacky rigging it with a VMC tungsten head. So you have a lot of weight, but in a small package, really irresistible to those fish up underneath the docks, but very easy to skip, especially for a beginner on a spinning rod. We're throwing that on 10 pound test. This is actually braided line. This is sunline braid. So if you do get around some dock pilings or anything like that, you're not going to lose too many fish. And then my go-to rig for most of the fish this afternoon was a 3 8 ounce jig with a rage caw trailer. And this also was on braided line. This is 50 pound sunline braid, SX1 braid. And a 3 8 ounce structure jig in black and blue because we saw a lot of bluegills up there cruising around the docks and hiding up in the trees, so that was also a very popular bait. And also around some of the docks I was throwing a tube when I had a little bit more of an open water situation I could get away with it. I was throwing a big meaty four inch and a half tube. This is actually thrown on 20 pound test fluorocarbon. 
in between the trees and the docks, I was actually fan casting out in front of the boat with a pure poison, which is a vibrating jig style lure. And I have a white rage craw trailer on the back. So actually two of the largest fish we caught today were caught on this, just throwing out in front of the boat on the weed lines. Another great little year class. Just swimming the jig through the pads. Another cute little one. There we go. And one thing that I like about school is um, seeing my friends and teachers and sometimes learning about um, work. That's actually easy. And... Uh, You'd rather be fishing? Yeah, I would rather be fishing with my uncle in, tour in tournaments. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, you can join us on Facebook or go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering.